So in this video, I would like to uh, demonstrate or show you some non-octet example. Non-octet simply means that uh, the compounds, uh, the atoms in the compounds, does not obtain an octet structure. Say for example, one typical one is BF3. Boron, it has three electrons on its outermost shell, but fluorine, it has seven. For fluorine, it has seven electrons, that means it would like to obtain one more electron so that they can uh, obtain a noble gas config, uh, configuration. So, one electron is needed. Say, so, let's look at boron. Boron, it has three electrons on its outermost shell, one, two, and three. Okay, and then we have three fluorine surrounding it, would like to obtain a noble gas configuration. So, fluorine, we share one electron, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> so each fluorine will share one electron from fluorine, uh, from boron. So you notice when you calculate when we count the number of electrons in boron, there will be only one, two, three, four, five, six, six electrons. So in this case, it does not reach the octet structure, but still, this BF3 compound is relatively stable. So this one is a, an interesting example. And another one, another typical example, and actually it's a funny example, is nitrogen dioxide. Okay, Nitrogen, we've got five electrons on this outermost shell, and oxygen, we've got six. So nitrogen actually would like to uh, the oxygen sorry oxygen here would like to um, share two electrons from others, and nitrogen can actually share totally five. So what nitrogen is actually doing here is sharing two electrons with the oxygen nearby. So oxygen, we share one two three four five six. So this oxygen is now octet one two three four five six seven eight. Eight electrons, so it's octet, and another two electron, uh, another three electrons from nitrogen will be rather interesting. One, two. <coughs> These two electrons would donate a pair of, le of electrons to another oxygen atom. So for this donation, is a uh, cost. Uh, it's actually. Uh, uh, I should say, this nitrogen would like to share these electrons completely with this oxygen without any uh, return. So you no notice, for this oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 electrons is already in octet. But this nitrogen is has one more electron left. One more electron left. So when you count the total number of electrons, this nitrogen NO2 compound, it has totally seven electrons. So it's not an octet as well, okay? So if we join this, uh, the structure of this nitrogen dioxide molecule, okay, we will have a diagram like this. Okay, it gives a dative covalent bond to the oxygen nearby. So for, after talking about the non-octet structure of the so oh, it's actually less than octet, okay, because it, this one has only six electrons and this one has seven electrons in the central atom. And for the, any other, uh, for other cases of non-octet, we would like to share one example called SO2. So sulfur it has six electrons on its outermost shell and oxygen has six as well. And this sulfur, it belongs to period three. Period three normally it has it can contain eighteen electrons, the maximum number of electrons on the third electron shell. So it can expand this octet. We call it expand octet. Expand this octet, okay, so that it can uh, contain more electrons. So it can share one, two, three, four. Okay, four electrons with a nearby oxygen atom. So oxygen can share two electrons with the sulfur as well. Another oxygen can share another two. So when you calculate <coughs> this at uh, the number of atoms in this sulfur, okay, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So totally, totally ten electrons is in the central atom. Okay, so quite different from what we talk about in uh, the octet structure. Another typical example would be PCl5. Phosphorus has five electrons on this outermost shell, okay, whereas chlorine has seven. So phosphorus, again, it will expand this octet. So five electrons, so sharing five electrons with the nearby five chlorine atom. And the chlorine atom would like to share one electrons with phosphorus as well. So at the end, we can obtain a structure like this. And uh, this one is the last one. So you notice, actually this uh, PCL5, again, does not follow the octet group. When we cover all the chlorine, we count the number of electrons here. This phosphorus containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 electrons as well. So by this video, you notice actually some of the atoms, uh, some of the atoms in a, in a compound, they will follow octet rule. Mainly they will follow, try to try their very best to follow octet rule. But some of them are not. Say for example, if we're talking about less than octet, then most probably they will belong to period two. Period two and actually only two compound uh, two atoms they will try to follow the non octet example. But for period three or above, actually they can start to expand the octet to to share more electrons with others or accept more electrons from others. So by taking these few examples, hope that you understand the theory or some phenomena that we can't explain before. And try to finish the worksheet so that you can understand more about octet and non-octet structure.